What's up guys, Graham here. I am ready for 3.5. I just woke up not too long ago and it's already in the game. I cannot believe that it's already patched up. They they did it ahead of schedule. So yeah, I'm excited to get in and start working on my characters, put it that way. All right, so whenever I seen that the patch was already in, I went ahead and looked at the patch notes, and there are a lot of things that are really cool about these patch notes. There's some things that I'm a little worried about, and other things I don't agree with, but overall, this seems like a really cool patch. So we'll see what uh, you guys think about it as well. You may not agree with all of my thoughts, but yeah, uh, Grim has his own way of thinking. So there are going to be a lot of good things I talk about, but I notice that towards the end of the patch notes, it's stuff that I don't agree with too much. So all of a sudden you're going to have me going from really excited to probably ending the video on a, on a kind of a down note because that's just, just the things that I'm seeing. All right. So to start off with, we have the affinity system. This is basically a reward for patrons. Uh, as in every time a patron logs in for that day, uh, they will get five of these affinity tokens and for every hour they play afterwards, they get another token up to three more. So you can earn up to eight of these tokens every single day. Now, uh, the playing for an hour, it does, it is account wide. So you can jump around to other characters and stuff like that. And the time will be all combined. Um, but you can use these tokens in order to buy things in the game, such as mounts and other things. Uh, I seen one of the mounts were, uh, uh, put on Twitter by Riftgrate. It looked like the levitation with like kind of an atom kind of, uh, light going around them and stuff. So it looked pretty cool. I thought it was a really good mount. So there's going to be some cool rewards with the affinity system, but this is for patrons only. If you do not have a patron status, uh, buy some wrecks or something like that, and then go ahead and get you a patron status. All right. So afterwards we have the raids and stuff like that. I'm not big on raids, but I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit. Uh, now, mind you, these uh, patch notes that I'm going to go over, I'm not going to go over everything. It's mainly going to be just the things that I have something to say about, put it, put it plainly. All right, so the raids here, uh, I watched the live stream whenever they were going over these raids, and it seems like it's going to change things quite a bit. Because in the past, whenever you had Ren of Fate and all that, and, you know, Storm Legion raids and all that, you could basically just pick up somebody and say okay would you like to take part in this raid people would send me tales all the time hey grim would you like to do rof or any of that and i would say yeah i i don't know what the mechanics are and stuff but can you give me a rundown and i'll try to do it and they said yeah of course so we would go into this raid and they would say okay the boss does this phase first and then this what happens then he does the second phase and this happens and then the third phase and this happens so you need to avoid this here you need to avoid this here and you know just it was three phases or something like that and it, it was like okay i i think i remember it all i'm probably going to die but i'm going to give it a try and uh once i see it i'll probably get the hang of it and all that and, and you know it, it isn't going to be too difficult I, i'll probably be able to pick it up uh, but it was difficult enough to where somebody would always mess up or lag or something like that, you know. So there was always raid difficulties no matter if you knew it or not. So, um, but the new raids are no longer going to be three phases. They're eight phases or more. And that makes it to where there's no way you're going to be able to just pick up players and explain eight different phases or 10 different phases or something. There's no way that a new player is going to be able to join your raids without wiping the raid multiple times, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's going to change the landscape of raiding for the most part, if they keep making them this difficult. Uh, even Ocho in the live stream was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do these raids, man. Um, 
but the raids were beautiful and they uh, they were just the graphics and everything were amazing so the top question was how the heck are we going to see these raids if they're that difficult Mo almost nobody's going to get to see them except for the top raiding guilds and uh in the past they put like rof and all that in chronicles where you could play them there and you could see the mechanics and all that and but it was nerfed quite a bit but you still got to do the mechanics and see the real boss fight for the most part just on a much smaller scale well they're saying that these raids are going to be put in instant adventures which means that they're going to be nerfed beyond reason basically because you have to make it super easy on an instant adventure group because you're going to have just anybody join it. And there, if you put any kind of mechanics that can wipe the entire raid, it's going to dishearten people, especially whenever you have these people that have no interest in being there except for to get their weekly done or trying to level up or anything else. So, yeah. I'm kind of wondering how effective this is going to be putting these raids into instant adventures versus chronicles, but we'll see how it pans out. I could be completely wrong and it could be a great idea. All right, so we're moving on to the big thing here. This is the PvP updates. I am so excited about this, but there are things that I don't agree with on it. Okay, to start off with, we have the Marauder boxes from that you get from PvP. They will be dro dropping Dream Breaker level items. So uh, it's going to be upgraded from what it was before. And uh, the new gear out is called Warmonger Gear. There is an additional upgrade path now. Uh, so whenever you get the gear out of the boxes, it will be Dream Breaker. Then you need to upgrade it to Frenetic and then Warmonger after that. Uh, in order to upgrade these items, you'll need, um, let's see, Abyssal Crusader Marks, which will make the accelerators. And then you'll need Favor Infused Accelerators that you buy with Favor. Um, but the weapons are no longer going to be dropping out of these PvP boxes. They are going to be bought off the Rift Store for Warmonger Tokens, I believe they're called. Um, Warmonger Marks. Uh, I had it wrong, but basically in order to get these warmonger marks, you have to buy them with a hundred thousand favor each and there's going to be a cap on them on how many you can earn a week. I know, I don't know if there's a difference between, uh, patron and regular accounts as far as the max that you can earn on these warmonger marks, but I know the patron is like six. So in order to get these PVP weapons, you cannot do it in one week or whatever. You, you've got, especially for a two-hander, it's like a four-week ordeal or something like that. And that's if you hit the cap on this every single week, which six of these Warmonger Marks is going to be 600,000 favor. That is a lot of favor. And most people are not going to be able to hit that cap. So it, it'll, it'll be a, a progression thing. So... Yeah, but it's a it's a great thing that they're putting the weapons on uh, out of the RNG because the armor and stuff is important, but the weapons are even more important. Take for instance, like a DPS class. If you have a weapon with really low DPS, you are so nerfed in uh, PVE or PVP. You know, just either or. Uh, of course, this is PVP gear, so we shouldn't really be talking about PVE, but you know, if you have a weapon that's inferior, it's much more damaging to you than inferior armor. Put it that way. Like a piece of armor. So, yeah. It's really good that the weapons is taken out of RNG. Um, let's see. Uh, they have also made it to where uh, the PvP weeklies are going to be easier to do. Somewhat. So... Uh, the guns for hire or hired guns quest, should I say, is going to, uh, be seven various wins in Warfronts and no longer include Port Sion. So that's a huge thing. Uh, most people don't like Port Sion. I know there's plenty that do, but most people seem to not like it. Uh, and it was always a long war front. And if you lost it, it was so devastating. So yeah, it's really good that Port Sion is no longer in that. 
Uh, the kill count for the weekly Conquest Carnage has been reduced from 2,000 down to 1,800. It's only a 200 kill reduction. I think it needs to be a lot more than that. Um, if they're going to reduce it, at least put it down to 1,500. Uh, I wouldn't even be opposed to 1,000. I, I think it should be at 1,000. Because getting that many kills in Conquest right now is pretty difficult uh there used to be uh conquest not too long ago was if you had a really good uh conquest match you could get a thousand kills and it, you had an amazing time if you got a thousand kills you were running around dominating everybody but everybody was fighting against you because they have to be in order to get that many kills so it was an amazing conquest match if you got a thousand kills but now it seems like Conquest just doesn't get on that scale anymore. So getting kills in Conquest is much more difficult than it used to be. And uh, if you could get a thousand in one Conquest match, you were just at the right place at the right time. And I bet you had a blast doing it too. So a thousand would be more ideal for anybody that's getting into conquest matches and trying to get kills. A thousand is a lot. A thousand eight hundred is so much worse. So uh, I think it needs to be reduced even more. All right. So another change is conquest has been changed quite a bit to where uh, the two phases of it have been um, changed around a little bit. Uh, phase one is significantly shorter as in um normally you would hit 65 percent of extractors obtained which would set off the timer uh the five minute timer uh where conquest would end after five minutes uh or you could do a thousand two hundred kills if there was a thousand two hundred kills done in the entire conquest match uh, not just by one team or something, but everybody combined, it would set off the timer and five minutes later, conquest would be over and determine a winner. Well, now it's reduced down to 750. That's really good because right now conquest just goes forever. If you're trying to obtain kills and, uh, for, for it to be 750, it makes it much more reasonable. Uh, so yeah, that's a really good change there. The second phase of conquest has been extended though. Now, uh, because before, if you had two competing teams, uh, the five minute timer meant a lot as in you didn't want the most amount of extractors whenever conquest, uh, started its timer because the, the team with the most extractors was the easiest to knock down afterwards. Usually uh that's if you have a competing team now mind you if you have just one team dominating running over everybody and all that you know there was a good chance that them having the most extractors they would probably still have the most extractors afterwards as long as there wasn't a real competing team but whenever you have competing teams if you have the most extractors that means that the teams hitting your extractors are going to be able to go from one to the next to the next to the next and just reduce your overall total fast whereas if you were trying if you were on the team with the most extractors and trying to get uh percentages you know the next two extractors might be yours anyway so you had to run all the way across the map in order to get another extractor all the while people are knocking yours down like crazy so yeah this whole strategy is going to be changed quite a bit with uh the phase is being uh, the second phase being extended to 10 minutes and maybe where teams just prefer not to take over extractors until it gets down to five minutes who knows well we'll see how it goes also they made it to where players can no longer join conquest matches if there are less than 200 kills remaining that makes it to where you are not going to be able to join right at the end of a match and expect to possibly get on the winning team now it's going to be uh you can't join at all once the timer starts or else uh 200 kills remaining so yeah pretty cool uh the sparkle quest is back sparkle quest is something that has been uh highly debated to put it plainly because sparkle quest was put in basically to make it to where uh 
normal people could get raid gear. Uh, you could get up to one sparkle box a week, which uh, most people were not getting because it takes a lot of work in order to get one of these boxes. Um, but if you accomplished everything, you could get a box every single week and get a raid piece of gear, uh, raid gear, uh, every single week. Well, the thing is, is that a lot of people complained about this because one, the people that were casuals that this was kind of made for would get one piece of gear. They'd finally complete everything and get one piece of gear. And then they go, okay, this was put in to help us, but the people that were getting a piece of gear every single week, now they're so much stronger than me anyway. You know, I'm so far behind, even worse now than I was before. And, you know, this was put in to help me, but it actually hindered me. Uh, the second argument that people are having is that raid people, the people that are doing these raids that work all these hours to figure out these bosses and down them and the progression and all that stuff. They are not liking that casuals are getting the gear that they work so hard for because now casuals can get a raid piece of gear every week and the raiders are going, why did we even do all this progression? What, what was the point if you're just going to allow average people that do not do all the work that we did to get the gear that we're working towards? So, yeah. It's kind of a highly debated thing, but Sparkle Quest is back. Apparently they thought it was a good enough idea to bring it back. Alright, so let's uh, skim on down here. Okay. This is where it gets a little depressing for me. Because I don't know... I don't know how to react to this. Basically, mages and clerics got a universal 7% damage increase buff. 7%. Now, uh, if... Uh, I'm, I hear that... Uh, and by what I read on the forums, I've seen the post by like Hikos and uh, Ekru and all them saying that Cleric has not been buffed up in a long time. It needed some buffs. Uh, they're, they're behind on raid efficiency and stuff like that. I get it. You know, I, I definitely get it. Um, but... I'm a PvPer. I'm seeing the PvP consequences of this. And just to put it plainly, look here at the mage buffs. These are all the abilities that got a 7% damage increase, unless it notes beside it, you know, like 2% for this corpse explosion. Um, but everything else got 7%. Look here. Pyromancer got a 7% damage increase. This is probably for PvE, but this is going to be in PvP too. I'm already getting blown up by Pyromancers with Cinder Bursts and stuff like that. They just got 7% stronger. 7% is a big deal. I don't even know how to react to that. I don't even know what to say. We'll see. We'll see, man. Gosh. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. Cleric. Everything here got a 7% damage increase. Now, uh, you guys already know my feelings on Inquisitor if you watch my videos. You know that I think that Inquisitor spec is basically the best for PvP. Now, is it doing Pyromancer Burst? No. Is it doing uh, dot damage on par with Warlock? No. Is it doing heals as good as the Sentinel? No. Is it, you know, all this stuff, but it does everything. It does, it has insane amount of CCs. It has how many, uh, like, four burst abilities that can be reset and done again. So, like, six to eight burst abilities that can be just back to back to back to back. It has heals 
like crazy. It can be paired up with uh, Justicar, I believe, to have passive heals for every damaging ability that it does. It has heals with uh, Overload, which is a class, you know, heal. It has, of course, it's big heal. With, I forget the ability right offhand, but where, you know, it gets a 50% heal. And then that can be reset and done again. It just so much going for this it has dots it has multiple dots it has a debuff to make people take more damage from inquisitor so much is going on with inquisitor and it's so good in pvp and it just got a seven percent damage increase i don't know man i don't know uh, I'm uh, and the thing is, is that every time I Inquis uh, every time I talk about Inquisitor and talk about how strong it is, uh, you know, you get the long time Inquisitor players that you know just you know pound out the war fronts with Inquisitor or do PVE with Inquisitor or whatever, and they go, no nah, man, you know, we need to be buffed up. We we're not doing as not enough damage. We're you know, we're, our burst isn't all that great. You know, we got to stand still for our burst. We got to, you know, dude, Inquisitor has so much going for it. I mean, whenever they tried to make Reaver have so much going for it, people threw fits, man. It was insane the amount of complaining that went towards Reaver. Reaver was fun because it it was starting to have decent options to it. Uh, take for instance, it had the dots. It had the dots that spread out, did good damage. It had uh, the debuffs to healers, great stuff. It had uh, the port forward, you know, where you can teleport 15 meters and it cleansed you. Awesome, man, great. It had pretty decent uh, burst with a viral stream. Cool, very cool. Uh, it had a stealth ability, man. It's just getting better and better. This is a lot of things you can play with in PvP and have a lot of options. It's it's so good whenever you have a lot of options. You know, it sucks playing a spec that uh, does good damage or something but has nothing else going for it. Like a Vulcanist, you know, where it has that one burst ability. Uh, or else, you know, if you're playing a warrior spec that you're running up and you're hammering away at people, but you only have a debilitate, that's all you have, you know, that, or in an interrupt or something like that. Uh, just really not a lot to play with. Well, Reaver was starting to have quite a bit to play with and people hated it. They despised it so much that it got nerfed into the ground. It's one burst ability, Viral Stream, got nerfed to where you have to stand still. Okay, we have one burst ability on Reaver. Okay, so the dots. Dots were considered too insane. They got nerfed. The damage overall got brought down if you, if you had it spread to multiple people. Um, the teleport, remove the cleanse from it. You know, it just got nerfed, all around nerfed. And then Inquisitor has all that and more. It has, you know, six to eight burst abilities if you reset it. It's got these heals, all these heals. It's got multiple dots. It's got, you know, so much CC. And it just got a 7% damage increase. All right. So... Like I said, the, uh, you know, towards the end of these patch notes, it's going to be a little depressing for me because this is crazy to me. Um, yeah. I don't know. All right, so back to the patch notes. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, there is uh, some more stuff. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, the main thing here for me. The mounts can all be train for underwater uh, riding. So uh, before I bought an, an underwater mount training item that you apply to your uh, mount that will allow it to swim through the water like the shark and all that does. Well, I bought it and I, I always ride the Ember Steed, you know, the dark horse with the flaming hooves and all that. Well, I found out that you cannot apply that to my mount. 
you have to apply it to something like a crab rock or something. You know, you couldn't apply it to your flaming horse. I guess, you know, physics in action there. You know, a horse can, should not be able to swim like that, especially a flaming horse. Well, that, that sucked. I had, I had this underwater mount training item and I couldn't apply it to my mount. And now I can. And in PvP, that doesn't really matter too much, except for in Codex. Codex, a lot of times you'll be riding up towards the vault and you'll fall off the rocks and you'll be on your mount and they'll dismount you and all that stuff, unless you're riding the shark or something. But now, my my horse is just going to swim right through the water. I don't even have to run up on the rocks if I want to run across and go right through the water. It's going to be so cool. So, yeah. Ended off on a positive note because I'm really happy about that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. A little bit, you know, downside for it to me at parts. Uh, some parts are really cool. I can't wait to gear up my characters. I cannot wait to apply the underwater uh, riding to my uh, Ember Steed and all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to read over the patch notes yourself if you have not done it. Uh, it if you just care about the PvP stuff, then I pretty much summed it up for you. So, alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.